Hello again. At some point during this video, you're probably going to think, what does this have to do with Ecuador? And hopefully I come to a conclusion that will have something to do with Ecuador. But it's certainly on my mind and I had a conversation recently. So I'm going to tell you this little story. First of all, I went in the Marines when I was 19. I was in the Marines for six years, two months, 18 days, but who's counting, right? When I got out of the Marine Corps, I had five weeks of leave coming. They also told me that I could take two or three months off, draw unemployment because of the situation coming from a war. They said nobody will ever question it. And I suppose that was probably true in, in those days. I've never drawn a nickel from the dole and I certainly wasn't inclined to then. But I had every intention since I was receiving a paycheck anyway for five weeks leave, I had every intention of taking some time off, decompress. It lasted four days. I was going stir crazy without having something to do. So I decided to go ahead and get a job. The job I got was nothing I expected. I was offered a job by Pizza Hut to be an area manager in Rochester, New York. The only reason I was offered that job was because I had been in the Marine Corps. And at the time I was slim and trim, fit and polished, and I walked like a Marine. They were looking for someone to clean up the area and they felt that Marine Corps discipline was just a ticket. And in truth, they were right. They, they were correct. And the place was kind of a disaster. I don't remember now exactly how many locations. Twelve, I believe. Um, something like that. And we'd opened two in the year that I was there. Yes, I only stayed a year. I got so bored and I, and I left to something else. I didn't actually even plan to stay for a year when I first took the job, but it was a pretty good challenge for six months. I will tell you the story that I just told a friend who just moved here, a new friend, who also did a stint with Domino's. He did a stint with Domino's. I did with Pizza Hut, so we were comparing some notes. The first store I went into was at night. Location. We call them stores. So I walk in and there's nobody around. I look around, I say, hello, anybody here? Place was dead. Now understand that the reason I chose that one to go to first is they had a whopping two to four hundred dollars a day. That's all day, all night in sales. You may not know anything about sales, but you have to understand how pathetically low that is when you figure there's going to be employees involved. It wouldn't even pay for employees. In other words, that location was essentially bankrupt. And I don't see anybody around, but the door is open, the lights are on, the pizza ovens are running. I'm in my little Pizza Hut suit with a tie. And I'm going, hello, 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 hello. Well, lo and behold, opens the bathroom door. Now there was one door and a little hallway and then a man and woman's bathroom. So there was one door that enters that. That door comes open. Out comes this girl laughing hysterically and right on her heels was boy laughing hysterically and this big cloud follows them out. It was not Marlboro's. And so I introduced myself and I'm looking at this and I'm kind of laughing myself. It's like, so I tell them I'm here and here's my name, shake your hand, I'm checking on the store. And they just keep laughing hysterically. And so I decide, well, they're just there laughing hysterically and there's no customers anyway. 
I decided to kind of walk through the store and the place was a disaster. I opened the cooler and the first thing I see is this big five gallon brass colored tin bucket. You know, had one of those lids that snap on except the lid wasn't in it. And in there was hanging a ladle. I forget what number ladle, but a, almost a, a, say a half a cup size ladle. And I'm curious as to what's inside there, so I look down and I see this kind of a dark green color, so I pull it out a little bit so the light, what it was is a big thick layer of green mold with kind of a hole in it where the ladle would go down, and so I pulled the ladle up and it was strawberries that would go on top of a cheesecake. Well, that's what I had to contend with in Rochester, New York when I took over that area. So it was a challenge. On the other hand, within six months, every store was running at a terrific profit. Uh, a couple of the stores they considered shutting down were booming. And so that's all I need to say about that. But my little stint with Pizza Hut showed me that in those days, this, this was in the late 70s when Pepsi-Cola and Pizza Hut had merged and they were going through some tra transformation, building some new stores, infusing some new money, switching out their Coke products for Pepsi products. And so I was there during that glorious time. So Pizza Hut, in that time, was king of the hill. Pizza Hut ruled the roost. Unless it was a local pizza shop that was just amazingly good, Pizza Hut was killer. They used the finest ingredients. The dough was handmade and it was done right. The sauce was handmade. Everything, the mozzarella cheese was high quality, expensive cheese. I know that firsthand. Everything that they used was the best. And the pizzas were killer. That's how they got to be number one. That's how they got to be way up there. Today, this year, they're almost 10% of the market when they were almost 70% of the market before. This year, for the first time, Domino's will go past Pizza Hut. So what happened? I should also say that this year, for the first time in years, Pizza Hut has dropped from the number one spot as far as popularity goes in the poll. Um, Papa John's has taken that place. So what does any of this have to do with Cuenca? Well, here's the deal. There's Pizza Hut in Cuenca. There's Papa John's in Cuenca and there's Domino's. Now when I first came here, I was in Millennium Plaza, my first month I think, and I saw Papa John's and I said, oh, I gotta try that. Compare it, curiosity. So I go over. It was awesome, it was great. The, every, everything is imported from the United States, so the cheese is the same cheese, and it's really good. I was really happy. It's expensive. A large uh, pizza is about $22 from Papa John's. So I had that. I've ordered Domino's. They'll deliver to your house. I've ordered it. It was okay. It was better than Domino's once was. They've upped the quality of their dough. It was halfway decent. In Mall Del Rio, there's a Pizza Hut. And I had the misfortune of deciding to order a pizza there. I got the pizza. I ended up throwing it away. I ate one piece out of the small personal pizza for $8 or $9 or something, little tiny thing. I had cut in four. I ate one of those, or most of it. I couldn't eat any more. It was like eating cardboard. It was tasteless. The sauce was pointless. There was nothing about it that made me want to eat it. I mean, I wasn't starving enough to where I would want to eat that. And so I'm reflecting today for some unknown reason about what has happened 
how could the best, the king of the hill, drop to the pits where I don't even want to eat the thing and I throw it away? And the answer is quality. They became king of the hill because they were amazing quality. They had very good standards. The other people did not. But the other people have been improving their quality. Well, Pizza Hut has been trying to live on gimmicks. Let's make a stuffed crust. Let's put, let's put American cheese in the crust and, and we'll call it um, toasted cheese sandwich pizza or something. Instead of just making a good pizza, they're you know, doing all these gimmicks. They throw in garlic and butter and call it that and they think that's going to get people to buy. And the sad thing is, Pizza Hut has decided that they're going to put money into their operation because of their cataclysmic downfall. $130 million they plan on putting into their operation next year in what? Better dough, better sauce, better cheese, and training? No, none of that. We're going to put it in advertising. If we can just tell you enough times that it's delicious and you want to eat it, that's going to take care of the problem and you're going to come and blindly eat that cardboard. So there's two problems with food in general in Cuenca. One is that in many places the quality of the food is inferior. That's just the, that's what it is and so it doesn't matter how you approach it, how you cook it, what you try to do with it, it's never going to be that good. There's other places that spend time and money to get the right quality items for their food and they're popular and they do well. People will pay Papa John's $22 for a pizza instead of the two for five dollar giveaway that Pizza Hut does solely because one is edible and tasty and the other one sucks. That's a lesson that should be learned by all restaurants here in Cuenca. You know you could.